Hey everyone, it's Flackfire. So cheating continues to be a problem with Call of Duty, particularly in the game's Battle Royale mode Warzone. I've seen a lot of comments from you guys telling me Infinity Ward and Activision aren't doing enough, despite shadow banning those caught red-handed and instituting two-factor authentication. In a previous video, I talked about Activision's approach to hackers, how it's basically designed to be so obnoxious that you just stop trying to cheat. For most players who might casually entertain that idea, it's usually enough. But what about those who are truly committed? What does it take, aside from a piece of your soul, to cheat at a video game like Call of Duty Warzone? Turns out the answer is exactly what you might think it is, money. Money can't buy skill, but it can buy you everything you need to ruin a match for dozens of other players. Before we hop into all this, how about a quiz? How much do you think it costs to cheat for a month in Call of Duty? Is it A, $5, B, $20, or C, $100? Hold on to your guess and we'll answer it later. For now, prepare for a deep dive into the seedy world of video game cheats. And I stress the point of this video is not to help anyone cheat. I'm going to be blocking out all the details that might make that easier for you, and I do encourage you to play the game properly. Cheating can quickly get you into more trouble than you realize, as you'll see soon enough. So, specifically, cheaters need three things. They need an actual cheat, a way to counter Activision's efforts to ban them, and a way to beat two-factor authentication. Much of this is easier said than done. With that said, first things first, unless you're some kind of computer whiz, you're going to have to spend money on cheats. Turns out there are several routes available to players, and they mirror the way many legitimate companies run their businesses. Everything is about subscription services today, and in many cases, cheaters can just rent access to hacking tools for a day, a week, month, or some hackers even offer lifetime services. Depending on the cheat supplier, prices for these services can range from about five to 10 bucks a day, 15 to $40 a week, and 30 to $90 per month. Oh, and those lifetime services, which promise continued support for the length of the time the game remains popular, can vary wildly from $70 to around $200. Of course, not all cheats are created equal. There are some cheaper options out there that include scripts that do things like eliminate recoil on weapons, while others are engineered with tools like aimbots and wall hacks, but are still designed to make a player look legitimate. Some of these even mimic natural player movement in an effort to fool anyone who might be watching. And if you're wondering why the price for cheats is so high, well, just like the developers update games to improve them, so too do the hackers. It's basically a digital arms race. While Infinity Ward is trying to improve the experience for players, hackers are looking for ways to exploit it. It's a cycle that only ends when the demand and money for cheats dries up. Another part of the cost involved in cheating is ensuring you can dodge a ban if one is actually handed out to you. Activision and Infinity Ward reportedly have a few different ways of issuing bans, including by IP address. The most difficult to circumvent is the dreaded hardware ID ban. Every computer has components with unique ID numbers, and if developers can tie some of those numbers to known cheaters, you guessed it, it's game over. Hackers work around this with a hardware ID spoofer, software that fakes different ID numbers. While some pricier cheats might actually include a spoofer, most do not, and that means you have to obtain one separately, which can run up to 50 bucks a month. There's also the new two-factor authentication that needs to be addressed. For this system, Infinity Ward requires all Warzone players with a free account to tie their account to a legitimate phone number. If you're caught cheating, your PC is banned and your phone number blacklisted, so if you try to use that same number, guess what? you're not going to be able to play. Certainly, just about everyone has a cell phone, so a cheater would be able to verify their first account. But after that, hackers need to find a way to generate a new number to fool Infinity Ward's two-factor authentication. Turns out, internet-based numbers like Google Voice reportedly don't work. 
but for about five bucks, you'll be able to find somebody online to authenticate that number for you. Of course, if that account gets banned, you'll have to shell out another five dollars to get another number verified. So let's go back to that question I asked you earlier. If you wanted to access cheats in Call of Duty for a month, what's the damage? Well, aside to your reputation. Let's say you wanted a cheat with a few options. That'll run $40. Month-long access to the best hardware spoofer will run you around 50 bucks, plus you'll need to cough up another five to get your account verified without using your personal phone number. If you want to add another layer of safety, you're probably looking at another fiver for VPN services to change your IP address. That totals up to $100 for a month. Now, obviously there are lots of ways to keep those numbers down, but that does come with more risk. Not every source of hacks is honest. Surprise, surprise. Many cheaters reported that they were scammed, paying for a product and receiving nothing, while others paid for a product and received a virus. And I tell you, if that virus ransoms your PC or steals your personal information, you're going to feel extra stupid for paying for it. So not only are you potentially shelling out big bucks on a cheat, you're also creating an opportunity for people to exploit you. If that happens, it's not like there's any magic button you can press to get your money back. Most of these transactions are private, and there's really zero industry oversight with this. It's basically the Wild West. Even if things do work out in your favor, you're still only renting a product. You don't actually own it. Many cheating services also experience significant downtimes when a game is updated. So if your cheat is detected, you can't use it or you risk a ban. Many cheat providers are also reportedly very hit and miss for customer support, as you might imagine for shady characters selling cheats. So why would someone risk everything for something as trivial as cheats in a video game? I've read a few comments from cheaters online and there's every manner of reason under the sun. Some players just want an edge with a wall hack, and others decided they've gotten so tired with cheaters and games that it's now, if you can't beat them, join them. I've even seen streamers using aimbots and pretending to be legitimate. The last one brings up all kinds of ethical concerns and a discussion about pressures and corruption brought on by fame, but that's for a different time. No matter how you look at it, cheating isn't fair to people playing the game properly. So remember that you can report hackers in Call of Duty using the on-screen prompts if you see something suspicious. Activision is also reportedly looking at ways to make this reporting process easier. Although after everything we've talked about here today, you might feel a bit discouraged, I encourage you to keep reporting cheaters. It might not feel like you're making a difference, but know that you are an important factor in the efforts to keep cheaters out of the game. And even if they do return from a ban, you've made their experience that much more difficult. And who knows, it might be enough to get them to give up cheating for good. At the end of the day, only one person decides whether or not they're going to cheat, and that's the player. I've read tons of comments from you guys on the last couple cheating videos, and it's clear you have little compassion for cheaters. And I'm curious, having an inside look at this, learning how much some players spend to cheat, what your thoughts are on this whole thing. Would you ever spend a hundred bucks a month to cheat at your favorite video game? What else would you rather spend that money on? Tell me down below in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If not, a dislike and make sure to tap the bell to get the latest updates on future videos. If you have a minute and want to check out what it's like to be a total noob in a $50,000 Rainbow Six Siege tournament, make sure you check out my last video. I'll leave a link to that uh, here in the video description and also on the end screen that follows this video. As always, thanks for watching.